Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to the Reversal Roundup. I'm your host, Logan Sama, and every week right here for Reversal, we round up the most exciting and interesting events that have happened across the world of the FGC. So let's get straight into our events this week. What's up, guys? Welcome back to UFT2 is a community Tekken event running in Rome. While, of course, a lot of Italian heavy hitters were in attendance, the three players everyone was looking out for were Super Akuma, Sefi Black, and Joker, who all made the trip. While pools happened with no big upsets, top eight was where all the hype was. Super Akuma and Sefi Black had to face in winner's semi, the run back from the European Cup Grand Finals, and it went the same way, 2-0 for Super Akuma. On the other side, Italy's Daniel Maddo was looking to defend the home turf against the invading forces, and his first challenge was Joker. And he rose to that challenge with a 2-0 win with Jin. Winner's final was Daniel Maddo versus Super Akuma, and Daniel Maddo's gin pick didn't seem like it was working, so he made the switch to Marduk. That change didn't save his fate, and Super Akuma closed out a 3-0 sweep to earn his place in Grands. Uh, yes, On the loser's side, Italian player Bode had a crazy loser's run, alternating between Leo and Julia. Unfortunately, his run came to an end in fifth place as he fell against Joker. Sefi Black defeated Iron Fury 2-0 to go on to face Joker in the loser's semi-final. The Feng proved too strong and Joker secured a 2-0 win to make it on to losers final, which was the run back between Joker and Daniel Maddo. A very strong start from Joker taking the first game with a no round brown. Daniel Maddo came back and took the next two games which forced Joker to the character select screen over to Heihachi. Game four went to a nail biting final round. Both players on low life, Daniel Maddo's back to the wall. No, what are you doing? Stand on it. And he pulls out the clutch parry on Wake Up to save the round and send Joker out of the tournament. The grand finals saw him go straight to Marduk this time, and the first set was very close, going all the way to a final fifth game at 2 2. And in a dominant game five, Daniel Maddow reset the bracket in style to give us a Shin grand finals. In a tense game one, Daniel Maddow closed out the last round with a pixel of life. Oh my god! He pulled even further ahead in game two, three rounds straight to give him the lead. And in an incredible final game, Akuma with one pixel of life going for the raging demon with two seconds left, it wasn't enough to kill, leaving Daniel Maddow with the slimmest of life leads. And his defense of the home turf was successful. Daniel Maddow was your UFT2 champion. No, like, there's biases involved with that, <laughs> yeah. so it's gonna be long. This past week, the UK Smash Ultimate Invitational Brink took place, and it worked in a very similar format to the Summit. 11 players were invited, and five players were voted in on public vote. This one, however, was not an international invitation, it was only open to UK players. The first phase was four round robin pools, split into four players. All players qualified for the second phase double elimination bracket, but of course, the top two placed in the round robin got seeded in winners, the bottom two placed in losers. If you've been following the Smash Ultimate scene, it'll be no surprise to you that Bloom Forever had a standout performance, even bringing out a number of different characters, including Little Mac. It wasn't plain sailing though, he lost in winner's finals against Luigi 3-1, but as during the invasion, he brought it back in grand finals, resetting in quick fashion with a 3-0 win, and then securing the title with a 3-1 victory in the reset. The UK talent pool is looking good though, and the placement of both Al BBS and Jezo in the top four 
was very impressive. Two players that we barely get the opportunity to see outside of the UK and more so outside of the region as a whole. It shows that the UK has got plenty of hidden talent and hopefully they'll be ready to take on an international challenge real soon. In Japan, first smash, Meisuma Top 12 saw an international invasion. Now, it's pretty rare to have a bunch of international players coming over to Japan, but a lot of NA players, some Australians and others were in attendance. Only Riddles could make a dent in the Japanese competition as he managed a top four finish. For some other top talent like Mute Ace or DeBuzz, they weren't even able to break top 32. However, the overall winner once again was a Cola. <laughs> Nearly a perfect run as he only dropped three games throughout the entirety of the tournament bracket. Japan quite possibly might be the best country in the world right now on Smash Ultimate. It was an emotional week for Ritas and the Salt Mine crew as they saw the culmination of the final Salt Mine EU League on Street Fighter V. As per usual, across multiple weeks of qualifying, eight players made it out. With ending Walker at the top, 126 points, he was joined by Hurricane and the double Falk pairing of Citizen and the Four Fills. It was Rickman's Barnet, Maldominant, Jiko, and Mirkin that made up the final eight. Everyone started in winner's side, that meant there was a lot of action to go. Ending Walker cleaned out Mirkin 3-1. Four fills with a dominant performance, 3-0 against Ukerman's Barnet. Hurricane with a flawless performance in the mirror against Giko. Oh, ooh, ooh. And Citizen with the 3-0 win against Mal Dominant set up the winner's semi-finals. The first semi-final saw Ending Walker once again switch to Cody for the matchup against Falk, but the four fills took it in a tense game five. We couldn't get the double Falk winner's final though, as Hurricane beat Citizen 3-1. It's over. The winner's final was an epic battle, but the four fills just edging it against Hurricane which set up Hurricane and Ending Walker to face each other in the loser's final. And it was Hurricane who was in the stronger form this day, taking a 3-1 win to get the run back at four fills in grand finals. And what a performance from Hurricane it was. Reset in the bracket, 3-1. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, I'm waiting for <laughs> And then a flawless 3-0 victory for Hurricane, who has to be the most winningest player in the history of Salt Mine League. So many titles taking that it's fitting that he took the last ever Salt Mine League EU. Some touching words from Ritas to close us out. Like I, so many, so many great stuff happened to me because of all of you guys and because of this game and Saltman League, 16 seasons, even before that, the German, the German only thing we did before this was great. And I just want to say I'm very grateful. Thank you very much. What an epic season it's been. I can't wait for Street Fighter 6. The Kings of the Marvel 3 community, Tampa Never Sleeps, returned with their 111th weekly installment of Bracket Action, featuring just shy of 80 players as we continue the hype leading up towards EVO 2023. New York's Ray Ray cruised into Grand Finals winner's side this week with his patented all-white Mags Doom Sentinel team, taking a 3-1 win over Escalante. Meanwhile, in Loser's Semi, EVO 2022 champ Ramora made quick work of Cosmos 3-0, his Virgil looking as optimal as ever. Moving on to Loser's Finals, it was looking like Escalante was well on his way to a rematch with Ray Ray at set point, but this fortunate happy birthday kept Ramora in the fight. One more Virgil clutch later, followed up by the Zero Show, and Ramora would fight his way out of Loser's side. In the grand finals, Ray Ray quickly moved to a 2-1 lead, but a well-identified happy birthday conversion on Sentinel and Doom took us to a potential bracket reset point in a fifth game. But in the end, the Magneto expert took this week's TNS, dispatching Zero and Virgil at the same time with a perfectly timed magnetic shockwave as Ray Ray looks to be shaping up as one of the favorites this year as we move ever closer towards EVO in a couple of months time.
Also this week, as the King of Fighters 15 tested out their cross-platform online netplay code, TNS was back for King of Fighters number 54 in their regular tournament series. In winner's final, Lokoff took it over Dark Angel in a very close set to make it into grand finals on the winner's side. Reno's double Yash team took it in loser's semis 2-1 and he would go on to face Dark Angel in losers finals. Dark Angel's Iori proving too strong and they cruised to a 3-1 win. That earned them the run back against Lokoff in grand finals and Lokoff looked like they were cruising once again, taking the lead in this fourth game. But Dark Angel was not down and out yet and brought it all the way back with a reset after taking a game five. How much meter you have. The momentum looked like it had fully swung in Dark Angel's favor as they took a 2-1 lead in the Shin Grand Finals. But in this absolute pendulum of a grand final set, Lokoff brought it back as the Yamazaki was proving too strong. Game five of the reset fittingly went down to the last characters each. And as the hype built up, it was Lokoff who was able to close out the set and take this week's TNS KOF, a resounding success in the test of this online beta. That's just about all we've got time for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget, hit us up on Twitter. It's at Reversal underscore GG. And let us know what events are coming up in the weeks to come in your area, whether you're an organizer or just part of the community. We would love to hear from you as tournament season heats up and exciting times are ahead. So without any further ado, I'm going to say goodbye, but thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Make sure you give us a sub, give us a follow, and stay up to the time with all of the content that we're dropping. And you may have seen we've got quite a few Street Fighter 6 videos out there right now, so well worth checking out on this channel. I'll see you next time around. <laughs>